What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, today we're going to talk about some players to target after the second tier of wide receivers and running back have gone off the board. So the guys that I'm kind of talking about here are your Mims, your Pittmans, Higgins, um, and then even into the Iukes and the Edwards and A.J. Dillon and Zach Moss. And then if Chenault's still around, I would pick up Chenault. Um, and then, you know, that list kind of ends with Antonio Gibson in there. And Antonio Gibson was a guy that we were, we got high on and excited about because there was some good value there. And the value has kind of worn off of Gibson a little bit. Now, I can't argue with you for the home run cut that could be taken on Gibson, uh, but I'm certainly going to let most of those guys run out before I take the stab on Gibson. And then I think he's properly rated in there, but it was a lot nicer when he was even further back than that, which was part of the appeal of uh of gibson but now he's a pretty raw player you know you're relying on on the redskins to bring him along properly who knows if that'll be the case or not um but still a very fun a very fun swing on gibson anybody feel any different about that well the fact that he was classified as a running back on these fantasy platforms definitely didn't help the skyrocketing value that's happened but yeah i'm down to take that swing and then i think i think that's pretty accurate we can cut it there and say okay now those right. are the main guys gone What's who, next? who who should you be targeting right so after all those guys are gone we're going to come with, through with a list of guys here uh we're going to tell you their their ADPs on DLF we're going to tell you some real life ADPs that we had them in some leagues and just give you kind of guys in the third round that are sometimes in the third round and sometimes in the fourth round to go through and and target in those drafts it's not necessarily saying you know we're going to give you a decent list and uh these are the guys that I'm consistently looking at to get in those rounds. Um, so starting with a running back would be Josh Kelly. After all these guys are gone, he's at a UCLA. Um, he on DLF is ranked 30th. Um, but then we had me and Big Co have some FFP 250 drafts, and we just got done with our rookie draft. Um, and he ended up at 27.5 in the average of three rookie drafts that we had. Uh, so Josh Kelly definitely gaining a little speed here. He's the Chargers' fourth-round pick, uh, sixth pick in that round. He's 5'11", 212 out of UCLA, uh, 4, 4, 4, 9, 40, three cone, sub, uh, subpar seven, sub seven second three cone, and a 23 uh, bench press reps, which is pretty solid. Um, in my opinion, I view him as kind of like a poor man's Vaughn, kind of similar in the way they're, they're kind of one cut, in my opinion, and, and, and get up field. Um, player profile had his closest comp to Sony Michelle. So that's not terrible. I'll take that uh, all day long. So he, he, he did pretty well, underrated at the combine. And on, on tape, I ne maybe necessarily wasn't quite seeing exactly what I saw at the combine, but definitely boosts his stock. And for everybody who's always going after the next running back off the board, as we usually are, Josh Kelly would be somebody after all those. I can't take him over any of those receivers or, or uh, Gibson that we talked about, but definitely would be the next guy in line for me. Um, he's a pretty solid all around player. He had 27 catches uh, and 18 and then only 11 and 19, but showed that he can do it. Um, I'm never that concerned about it, but, uh, you know, some people get caught up in a threshold of numbers, and he's past the threshold of numbers that people get uh, very caught up on. I thought he was very capable. Uh, despite his situation at UCLA, he showed pretty good. And then on top of it, he walks into a Chargers organization that, A, is probably going to start Tyrod Taylor. So anytime you add a player like that who runs around a little bit, definitely makes life a little easier on the running back. Um, they went in and they made some changes on the offensive line as long as, as well as an offensive line coach. They hired James uh, Campin, who was with the Browns and had been with the Packers for a while. They also brought in somebody he was familiar with and Brian Balaga. They traded, they got rid of Fluker or um, uh, I'm drawing a blank right now, but they traded the, the uh, Carolina Panthers, Panthers for Turner, yeah. um, who's, who's a pretty solid player. So they made two upgrades there and they should get Pouncey back who missed a lot of time. Uh, so they, they should have a much improved offensive line from where they were last year. And there's just not a ton of depth there. 
um, at the running back position for the Chargers. Eckler's great, really good receiver. I don't necessarily trust him as the early down guy, and we'll see how that goes. But Josh Kelly seems like a very capable player, slightly above average, nothing super crazy. I'm not expecting him to come in and just take over and run wild, but a guy for building some running back depths and taking another swing at running back. I like taking Josh Kelly. Any yeah, I'd have, to, I'd have to agree with that. I mean, he's a, he's a pretty good player. He comes in to a pretty good situation, like you said. Watching him on tape, I thought he showed some good agility. I mean, there wasn't too many people who had a sub-seven-second three-cone drill in this year's draft. Right. Um, and, and, but he can also finish with power. Drink. Drink. Uh, I, thought, I thought he showed good speed on the field. It kind of matched what his combine 40 was. And it's not just the speed, though, but it's the acceleration in those – tight quarters yeah. that I thought was really nice, especially after the catch, which I think he's an underrated receiver. I mean, like you said, he had those 27 catches, but I mean, you see him catch the ball out of the backfield. Well, you see him track the ball, you see him make catches outside of his frame. So I think that, uh, I think he's a good compliment to this team. We all like Justin Jackson, but I don't think he's the between the tackles grinder that they're really looking for. And they spend a decent pick on him. And so I'm down to take him right here next off the board. Like you said, Big Co, any thoughts on Josh Kelly? Joshua Kelly with an E? Yeah. And, you know, just like Casey was saying to get started, this this isn't somebody to go reaching for. This list isn't really for people to reach for in your draft. But if you're sitting there at the end of the second, early third, and all the players that you're really familiar with are gone off your list, or, you know, or, or if, if, if it's been a pretty – they're going to be mixed up in order that they went off. But if like, you know, all those guys that Casey listed to start with are gone, you're sitting there looking at, you know, if you got no real veterans of note in your rookie draft and you, you're basically looking at rookies there, this is a really good, if you're getting a, a decent stab at running back depth on your roster, early third round where you, you know, quarterback can run. If Eckler were to get hurt, Anything can happen. I say it every year. Right. You could be first quarter to first game, and look what happened to Nick Foles last year. Broke his collarbone. You could all start up training camp you know? and have a, you know, from the way things are going this year, you could have, a, you know, a hammy pull that keeps you out for, you know, who knows. And True. it doesn't even necessarily need an Eckler injury, I don't think. Yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. About, is, I'm just talking about upside. Right. If you, for, yeah, to get the whole package, to you know, you, somebody, you probably need an Eckler injury, but there is some upside with, to, with Eckler to, healthy. To put a player on your team in the early third round of a rookie draft, that has the potential that could be in the Chargers offense because they still have – they got playmakers on the outside mm -hmm. and they got, uh, you know, the upcoming quarterback potential rookie. But right now, if it's Tyrod, we know what Tyrod can do with the run, running game. And mm -hmm. somebody like this, early third round, late second round. And I think it's going to be Tyrod for a minute as long as they don't succumb to L.A. pressure of fans. Like, that should be Tyrod. You should let – uh, Herbert sit for a minute. Who's athletic in his own right? You saw that in the Rose Bowl. Sure, I would agree. All right, let's move on to the next guy. All right, so we're going to go in order the way they're ranked on DLF. Josh Kelly was not quite there, but I thought he was important to bring up because he is a running back and he would be the next guy that we would take. These aren't necessarily now in the order that we would take, but we're just going in the ADP that DLF has him in. And that also states that, you know, hey, you had five drafts where these people – kind of had these guys and they grouped them in an order. I'm here to tell you that that's not the way it always goes in real life. It almost never goes the way that mock went. And me and Big Co, like I said, we've been in these 250 drafts for FFPC and we got an average of three of them. And not a single one of these next couple of guys that we're going to talk about, they weren't, they didn't get drafted only – that each one of them got drafted one time in the third round. So the rest of them fell to fourth. Now in FFPC, you do cut down. So there are a couple of veterans that end up getting drafted at the end of the second and through the third. So it can bump them down a little bit. But you see these guys all spread out. They're typically not in a group like they were on the DLF ADP. Um, and in real life, like I said, anything can really happen. The two of these guys that we're going to talk about here could be all the way down the third and two of these guys that we're going to talk about who might be a little bit later targets could easily be drafted in the mid third. You know, everything moves around and it's pretty fluid, but we're going to stick to the DLF ADP and we're going to go with KJ Hamler as the next guy. Uh, the thoughts here with Hamler is he's kind of different than some of these other guys on here is he's just a huge home run cut. Like I know some people in the dynasty community are trashing the guy and that's fine. But at this point, once you get into the third round, now, you know, if you want to take a swing on upside, this <laughs> he's your guy. Um, <laughs> he's drafted in the second round as the 14th pick. So a strong amount of capital for people who get super excited about that. And for me, 
at the end of the day, capital is just going to lead to the, the biggest thing is that it could lead to some extra opportunities. Um, and KJ Hamler is 5'9", 178. Obviously, that frame isn't what you desire out of a guy. And he didn't run the combine due to a little hammy, but it's speculated he's around a 4'27 guy. That's what they're saying his pro day was at. Some other people have said that's where he's at. And when you watch him on the field, you can see that he's a very, very fast product, and a, you know, a prospect. And it doesn't take very long to see his speed and twitchiness pop off the screen at you. Um, so that's kind of what you're getting with this guy. He certainly does have the Knoxes, you know, he does have some focused traffic drops where he's not the most fact and he does let balls get in on his frame. I think that's a fixable thing with, with more reps and more practice. He tore his ACL at, uh, at Penn state. So he, you know, had some time coming back. Um, but he can take, he can kind of do, he could take the short one and take the long one. He does play out of the slot quite a bit. Um, so it will be interesting to see how they work him and Judy on the field, moving those guys around. But, you know, we don't really know what Drew Locke is necessarily capable of yet, just yet, but he has been put in decent position to succeed. And then, and it really any QB in this situation would be super excited. Um, so, like I said, you walk into a situation where there's a lot of capital here on Hamler. Um, and they really spent a lot of capital on the offensive side of the ball. And why not when you're in competition with Kansas City and Andy and Mahomes over there? So they've beefed up. The, the Denver Broncos have beefed up on, on offense. Um, and if KJ's hanging around, uh, like I said, a lot of people are hating on him because ADP doesn't represent what I've seen personally on these um, on the DLF ADP. He's usually a little later than they have him here at 25. Um, from, from where I'm seeing him and I, I would love to scoop him up one. He's splashy and wiry and quick. So th there, there, there's a, there could be, if you're getting him in the third round, when he's making those splashy plays, there could be an easy quick flip for a second round pick. So you could make some quick value off of these guys. Cause people do get excited about those kind of players. Oh, he's the next Tyree kill. I'm not saying he's the next Tyree kill, but that's what immediately if you're, smaller and fast and you score a crazy touchdown, then you're going to be compared to that. That's just the world we live in. Um, and then, you know, it's going to be hard to double this guy when you put Sutton and Judy out there, there's not much room for any doubling or bracket coverage on Hamler. So, uh, you know, a lot of good things moving forward. It's to be determined whether Locke is the guy who can distribute to all these things. And if he can, I mean, this is great value on, on, uh, on KJ Hamler. I agree. 100% with all that. I think people are down on him because of this landing spot and people aren't sold on lock or just the uh, lot, a lot of the other mouths that are there to feed with Fant and, and Melvin Gordon along with those two uh, really good wide receivers that they have. Uh, this dude's just – he's just an electric home run cut and he's he's a punt and kick return extraordinaire. So he's really good with the ball in his hands and, and he's going to get – He's going to see the field and be be dressed and stuff like that. And, and I think he's going to be their, their slot guy. I mean, he had 616 of his snaps came from the slot, only 74 out wide. I know Jerry Judy is considered a slot guy or people say he should play there. But if you look at the snaps from last year, it was actually pretty evenly split from him playing out wide and playing in the slot. So I could envision them moving Jerry outside, and, and they're going to move all these guys all the right. way around the formation is what it comes down to. But If, if when, you're not moving guys around at this level and, and right. causing matchup problems. But this dude, there's a lot of things to like about him, you know, besides the fact that he's only 178 pounds, which Marquise Brown came in super light last year and made a bunch of splashy plays, and he was the first overall wide receiver pick, so maybe you didn't get – the value jump that you would see. Maybe he just kind of sustained what people had, but this guy isn't going in the, in that, in the first round of, of startups, you know, he's, he's a third, third, uh, middle first round third, of rookie drafts. Right. Right. Yeah. Rookie drafts. Um, but I mean, like you said, he's twitchy and then he, I like his route running. Like it's a reoccurring theme with a lot of these guys. Like he varies his speed and he's always open underneath and he just can't guard him. And then when he, when he catches it, he's a threat to take it to the house. So I, I'm, I'm liking taking this swing and, and taking a swing for the fences and, and trying to get that jump in value. Or, hey, maybe you just like him and you hang on and see how this thing goes. Yeah. Big Co, uh, closing thoughts? Again, this is Dynasty. I think one a couple things that are very true here. Uh, your boy's going to make some splash plays. and Splash. With all the weapons that – Okay, you know, Jay Wayne took us through the offense there. There's tons of mouths to be. We don't know what Locke's going to do. It's a crazy offseason. You got to 
take this guy and understand that you might not put him in your lineup for at least a year. He's going to sit yeah. on your bench. Maybe he's on your taxi squad. Maybe he looks really good from game to game one. You know, game one, he might be nowhere to be seen. Game two, he might have a 70-yard touchdown and look amazing. And like you right. said, you take this guy in the late second round, middle third round, early third round. He makes a big play in the first week of the season. Maybe he's part of a package. It's a trade deal, and you traded him away. It, yeah. That's just that's what happens in Dynasty. You might pick him up, put him on your on your taxi right. squad or at the end of your bench for a year or two before he even plays. Who knows? But it's a good it, point. There's it, a lot lot of these guys that we're talking about. You're probably not drafting and getting right startability. You know, like you said, it's Dynasty. Like not too many of these guys that we're going to cover. You're going to say, hey, pick them up, and you you know you're super comp. That's why they're getting drafted in the third round. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, third and four, and sometimes fourth round when it falls that way. Yeah. One last thought here is it's kind of situational where you want to take these guys. Like this guy's a little bit of a riskier upside play, but we, we have a league where there's a ton of starters that you have to throw out there and you get bonus points for long plays. So like he could potentially help you out a week here or there if, if you're in a, in a pinch and bye weeks and injuries right. and whatnot. So depending on the, your league and, and even how your team's built, you know, if you have a stacked team and you can take a risk and take this guy, then, then maybe you put a, put a, uh, a, a pro on a pro and 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 stack them up and if, if you don't maybe you want to go with a safer play which we'll get into some of that here moving forward but I just wanted to throw that last little thought in there all right let's get on to the next guy who's uh he's at 29 on the DLF ADP like I said we're going to keep these guys in order according to their ADP it's not necessarily how we view them either I do know that this is probably you know I know Jay Wayne's probably the biggest fan fan out of us all we all do like this guy which is why he's on the list um, but he's a second round pick, um, again, in the FFPC drafts that me and big co had, which is for $250. He was only drafted once in the third round, just like Hamler, who we just talked about. So you don't, it can't even get an average ADP on this guy out of three drafts. So just like that, he's in the fourth round. Um, he was drafted in the second round, 25th pick overall. And I feel like the capital is kind of almost getting overlooked on this guy, really. Like, nobody's even really talking about how high this guy got drafted and, and what he does because he just seems like he's kind of a pro's pro. His dad comes from the professional background. His dad's a coach. So he's got all these little parts and pieces to his game. But I'll, I'll let Jay Wayne mostly take you through this guy. Let me get a fresh crack from my man, Van. Boom. Yeah, watching Van, it's like, where, where's the hype at on this guy? Why is he getting zero of it? You know, because when you watch it, it's so good. But I can tell you why people don't like him, right? He had low production, so people don't like that. I'm going to blame some bad quarterback play. Uh, Felipe uh, Franks, who was typically the quarterback at Florida for a minute there, is the biggest clown, and that dude sucks. And they trash, trash came in and Trask came in and played, you know, better. And I, I feel like really elevated this, this Florida team who, who, you know, kind of relied on its defense a lot, but Felipe Franks, I hate that guy. <laughs> so maybe we can make a little, little, uh, compensation for why he had some low production. He had a Jones foot fracture that kept him out of the combine. So there's no combine numbers to get to fuss over. And then he's a little bit old. He's going to be 24 in season. So nobody likes to see that. So late breakout age, bad college dominator. He's no way he can be good. Right. Mm -mm. But before you tune out, say get, have had it with this guy. Let me, let me give you some pros. Uh, he's one of the best route runners in this class. Like you don't believe me. Just ask those LSU defensive backs. Uh, Stingley oh, yeah. and him. Fulton. Like, I'm going to throw out some – I'm going to throw roll you some tape here. Like, he was just working those dudes all game long. Uh, and he Maybe he's not the fastest zero to 60 guy, but his 60 to zero is impeccable. He can stop on a dime. He's got various intricate releases off the line of scrimmage. His head fakes, the hip sinkage, the acceleration out of breaks. He varies his pace. Not, not unlike a lot of the things that we like about C.D. Lamb. He's just maybe not quite as electric. Obviously, nobody is as, as C.D. Lamb. By, and, and his yak numbers weren't great, but I think that, that the acceleration that he has when he gets upfield after the catch, uh, maybe, maybe I would, I, I would get, I'm going to say he's better than his yak numbers. Uh, I think he's got pretty good hands. He didn't have a ton of drops. Like you said, dad played in the NFL for 13 years. He's currently the Jets wide receivers coach. Uh, he's got good versatility. There's plenty of slot uh, snaps inside and outside, so they can move them all around. And that's why the, Ram took him, the Rams took him with the 57th overall pick. So draft capital if you're into that kind of thing. I just 
I just think he's a really safe play. He should get some opportunity. That offense is not too far removed from being really good. They lost, uh, they lost some receivers Bingo. this offseason, and he comes in and he can do a little bit of everything. And he's – give me the polished route runner. Give me the guy who knows what he's doing out there and has good size, and I think he can add to his frame a little bit as well. So I, I really, I'm really liking some Van. Just draft – you know, draft and hashtag just guys who are good at football. He's already coming in as a pretty polished player, like you were saying. The Jones fracture of the foot is what kept him out of the combine. And, you know, that could be a little bit of a reason why some people are a little hesitant on him. But I'm sure the analytic crowd absolutely does not like this guy for all those things that you mentioned, which is part of the reason why half the people will give him no love at all. But this is a really interesting prospect. Big Co., um, I know you're interested in anything that goes on over at the Rams. Robert Woods and I think Cooper Cup are maybe only under contract for another year. Josh Reynolds is out of there after this year. Um, so not saying that they'll let any of those guys walk away, but you know, right. you never know. The Rams aren't haven't been the best at managing the cap. Um, so go ahead. Well, my biggest thing right now is it, at worst, he's the number four for the Rams. Mm -hmm. And they've asked Robert Woods to do everything under the sun the last couple of years. So it wouldn't uh, surprise anybody if he came up limp, limping at some point because he's never missed a snap. Um, Cooper Cup has been in and out, obviously, but he's amazing when he's in there. And Josh Reynolds, although he's still, you know, a good sideline ball tracker, he, uh, he, he hasn't necessarily broken out, you know, but when, whenever, uh, Cooper Cup missed it, missed time, and and Brandon Cooks missed time. He he's done what they needed him to do. He so can find a spot. I like I like I really like cheap Josh Reynolds, but you bring Van in, and I I said this to you when we were discussing one of our rookie picks. I feel like when Van walks onto the field, he's a better route runner than uh, Josh. You know, so and, and like. Josh gives like, them that downfield speed, so they're, they're, there's like, a little bit of different and size. You know, yeah, sure, sure. But like Jay said, I mean, we're we're not we're we're twelve months away, removed from the the Rams being the best thing ever on offense. Um, and uh, you know, give me give me another year. Give me give me give me give me a little bit of improvement in an offensive line. It can't be as bad as it was last year, right? Uh, you know, I mean, it can be bad, but it can't be as bad as it was last year. Uh, the wheels fell off. Um, you know, I just feel like that the like you. I wanted to bring this up when I was talking about KJ and and that draft pick, but obviously I didn't want to spoil it. You know, so let's just mm -hmm. get through KJ and bring up the name Van. Like Jay was saying, it's a little bit safer pick. The opportunity is probably uh, right there in front of him as far as you know. KJ put him on the team with his own, you know, draft pick with with Judy, and then also you got the you know the the returning. Incumbent Sutton. Sutton being a beast, and then Melvin and Gordon and Fant, and and then the the new tight end is is True Lock's boy from from uh, college, college, you know. So oh, there's gosh. a lot going on there, right. and so now I just feel like Van has a lot shorter, quicker route to opportunity, and uh, not necessarily that Jared Goff has been extraordinary, extraordinarily good, or anything like that. We just we've seen a lot more at it when when Goff and the coach are together inside that 15 seconds before that 15 seconds runs out and they, he could talk to him in the helmet. He's, we've seen a lot more of that than what we've right. seen of Drew Locke. I'm just a lot more right. comfortable with that Rams yeah. offense potential. Uh, you know, not that Drew Locke doesn't have a ton of potential yeah. in that, Rams, that Broncos offense. Well, the one, and, and the one guy, the, the head coach of the one team of the Broncos is Vic Fangio, who's a all Hall of Fame defensive guy. And the other sure. guys, sure. you know, it was the boy genius who was the hottest guy available offensively. Um, so. Yeah, if I'm sitting there in the third round and I got Hamler and Van sitting there staring me in the face, like I don't know what I'm going to do. Like that's going to be really hard for me to choose between. Well, you them. said it. You said it. What's your team look like? Right. right. Do you need somebody that you might be run? able? Do you do you need somebody that might you might need to put them in your lineup week three and and play them for five straight weeks? It's probably Van. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably better off to be. It's more likely going to be Van that right. you would feel comfortable doing that. So you have a deep roster and you might have a, a you know, home run cut flex play or you got a really good team and you're like, okay, I can just take a shot on what KJ Hamler could become. Yeah. It may, it may be a different quarterback next year throwing it to the Broncos. Maybe Fair. Drew Locke's awesome. Who knows? But they right. did go all in on offense. Then it may or may not be with Drew Locke in the future. Yeah. 
So we have one more guy on on this level of guy, on this level of players that we're targeting, and then we have a couple more guys that are a little bit below him, and then some more guys that are a little bit below him. And the next guy is Devin DeVernay, just to let you know. Big Co, would you say that Van Jefferson would be your favorite out of the guys outside of the running back that we're going to bring up here? I am, in, I am a little bit excited about the potential for K.J. Hamler. It's just for me, you know, the Broncos – I can sure. see I can see him just being nothing for you a love year. a tasty situation and this is I love a good tasty situation. <laughs> I love a good tasty situation. And especially this year with the with the muted off season. Mm-hmm. Like I, I you know, there's just so much that needs to go right for teams this year. And the 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 Rams bringing back everything but Gurley. You know, and Brandon like, Cooks, which opens up a spot. Hopefully, that's, for well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. But you know, there's it's just you know so much so much going on here, or the lack of things going on. Right. Uh, you know, I don't. It's not that I like one player or another. It's just with this off season going on, I'm, I feel like there's a better chance of Van to help your team sooner. But I would. I got no problem putting Hamler on my team if I have the bench spots for it and just waiting and see what happens. All right. So I think he answered the question. He's going Van and. <laughs> The, if I if I have an upside if I if I have a roster spot that I what I want upside I got I can take Hamler if I have a roster spot where I'm like I I might need this guy to play because my wide receivers don't look great I'm going Van yeah I'm gonna be doing that Jim Carrey thing where he's pulling Pull his, his hair, hair out from wire wire, wire. <laughs> yeah all right well let's move to the to the last guy in this kind of tier level that we're talking about here let's do it all right so the last guy in this. Uh, tier or level that we're talking about of the targets that we're looking for after all those other guys that we talked to the top that were gone is Devin DeVernay. Like we said, he's 32. So he was last on the ADP list. He's my personal favorite out of any of these guys. Um, But I have noticed that he is typically going after those two guys for the most part. So if you're like me and like Devin DeVernay, you might be able to get cute and move back a couple of spots and still get Devin DeVernay, or you could just take your guy and make sure you don't miss him. But I really like this guy again. Just like we talked about with some of these other guys in our FFPC drafts, Devin DeVernay only got drafted once in the third round. They have him at 32 here, so right inside the end of the third round for uh, uh, DLF's ADP. He goes to the Ravens, third round pick, 28th pick overall. He's 5'10", 200, 439, 40, so pretty fast. He had a ridiculous 2019 he was the go-to guy on Texas. If they needed a first down or really anything during the game, this was the guy that you're looking for. He had 106 catches, 1,300 yards, and nine touchdowns. He's mostly a slot guy, and I know a lot of people don't really like the fit on the Ravens, but I, I actually kind of do like the spot. It feels like a nice place for him. It feels like a nice piece for Lamar, somebody who he could get the ball out to quickly. Um and he could also go deep. Like, DeVernay can take you deep. He's got the speed to go deep. He also could be a guy that, like I said, you, Lamar, they could work with getting quick slants and quick outs and quick things to DeVernay. Gives him another option because, I don't know, Miles Boykin's probably not the answer for what they want. I feel like he's a good fit and a problem if him and Hollywood Brown are on the same field at the same time and you add in Andrews. Um, and I also feel like the ad-libbing that could go on that is going to go on on this um, – Ravens offense, good luck covering DeVernay with his quick twitch ability and long speed. Um, because like I said, he could take the short one to the house or he can take the long one well long. Like he's I, I he's my favorite guy. He did a lot this year for for Texas. I loved watching him play. Um he's got a decent frame and really good size. He's a trackster or track star. Trackster. Um, so this is uh this is my guy if if I if I got to take a pick your your guys' thoughts on Devin DeVernay. I think there's a lot to like about Devin. He uh like you said mostly a slot player, played all but 7 snaps in the slot, but a ridiculous productive year, 105 catches, 129 targets, almost 1400 yards and nine touchdowns. Like that's a ton of production. Uh and 42 of those catches were screens. Uh so that's that's something that 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 Lamar can get him involved in and like you said they can't cover everybody and you get the ball in his hands and that's one of my favorite things about this guy is how nasty he is after the catch Uh, he was tied for fifth in the nation with the most broken tackles uh, last year with 23 
he looks like a running back when he has the ball in his hands. Yeah. So that's that has to be a huge deal for why why the Ravens wanted to take him. He's really good in contested catches for his size. Uh, he's really he's really got a good contested catch rate, and he only had three drops on all those targets. So he's got some of the most consistent hands in this class. And then you, you add in that electricity, that speed, and I can see why he's your favorite guy out of all these all these things. And and I'm warming up to the idea of him being a Raven and him them getting him involved and and being able to make an impact. Right, and it's just you know we talked about the Rams and how you like the spot and you know the Broncos, but. The Ravens are just just always that good organization. They're, they're they usually make good picks. They they make good decisions. It just seems like this is a this is just a, a a match made that people might not see to be great at first, but I think really could be uh, really strong. If this guy goes somewhere um, where there was like a strong slot presence, I think he would, we'd be talking about him up in that group of guys that we talked about to lead off this show. That hey, dr- make sure you get all these guys. Uh, before you take the next group of guys, because I think he's he's that kind of a special athlete and player. Yeah, and and I think not only did he get drafted after Hamler and uh, Van Jefferson, the fact that he goes to Baltimore, anybody that um, had a wide receiver on Baltimore last year, outside of the couple of games that Marquise Brown was startable and played awesome in those couple games, it was wide receivers went to die. Right. So, I think that's there's no doubt that that's why he's in that ADP range for the rookie drafts, and a lot of people aren't going to look at it with the with the open mindedness that you guys are. Um, a lot of people are going to say running backs and tight ends and Lamar Jackson running, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I'm I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. Uh, so I, I I mean, before the NFL draft happens, I you know Casey, I heard you say how much you like Devin and. Uh, I like that you still like him after he went to maybe one of the worst spots for the maybe the for the football to come his way. Um, but you saw that you saw consistently not flashes, but just consistently. Mm, it wasn't exciting, but it was there, and it was there all year long. It was Willie Sneed mm-hmm. easily replaceable? Willie Sneed, right? You know somebody, and 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 he wasn't the big guy. Who was the Who was the other rookie over there? Not Boykin. Miles Boykin. He wasn't Miles Boykin, the big, fast, athletic receiver. It was Willie Sneed. Where are you going to be quick? Where are you going to be when I need somebody that's going to be in the right spot? And Devin could definitely take that spot and run with it. Again, I would imagine that's probably going to be something that starts off very, very slow, especially with the Ravens. I imagine that they're going to try to put, you know, things in in place that makes it as easy as possible on Lamar Jackson to get going and get get some hype going and get gets get the ball rolling again this year so to like speak like screens to Devernay <laughs> potentially potentially um but i i Those think PPR that PPR points i think that the the points that you and Jay made are really good for people that would be listening to this that would might you know just completely not draft him just because beside his name it says B A L right for Baltimore, yeah, you know, just because he plays on a on a you know on a team that the quarterback set in the NFL re- record for rushing for the quarterback and, and right. you know stuff like that, people are just gonna say I don't want this guy. But the talent and potential again, this is dynasty. We're talking about late third round here, mid mid third, three eight, three six, three nine in your rookie draft. Somebody that you would probably consider you're gonna miss on anyway. Mm-hmm. Like this is that's your pro, right. your, your chances right. of picking somebody that's going to be good and put this somebody that you're in it is going to end up in your starting lineup consistently is about ten percent. Mm-hmm. So who cares? Right. Take somebody who's good and hashtag good at football. That's kind of what we're we're talking about here. So well, the, the production numbers you just mentioned there for the for the analytic guys, the the most consistent analytics you can come with come up with for wide receivers going to the NFL is just production in college. Right. It's the one that matters the most. And like you said, Jay Wayne, he's older or um, Van Jefferson's older. Like Cooper Cup was old and nobody wanted him because he was old. And guess Mm -hmm. what? He's a red zone monster. He's just a monster. Devin Duvernay (laughs) was an absolute, you know, producer. And now he's with, with, with Mark. This, this is exact. this is not quite this extreme, but this is what I was saying about, uh, Michael Gallup going to the going to the Cowboys three years ago. I was like, "There's no chance Michael Gallup's going to be any, on any of my teams." It took two years for that to be a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, for the first two for the first year, I was absolutely correct. The second year, it was starting to get a little marginal. And then last year, my, Michael Gallup looked awesome. 
You know what yeah. I mean? So now, well, I think just, I think last I think it's I think he's only been I think this is his third year. Was the only is it, this coming in is two, is, two, is two years? Yeah, I think this is his third year. All right. Well, but I know those, what you're saying. Right. Blend all those <laughs> blend all those together, and yeah, I was right for a year, wrong for a year. You know, it's just like well. If you got a chance to pick this guy up in the fourth round, there's no problem. You got no problem being wrong for a year. Stick right. him on your bench if you got the spots. Yeah. One last thing Not. to do, and I'm surprised. I just looked up his college dominators only in the 58th percentile. So I don't, 105 catches seems like a lot, but I don't know my analytics that as well as I probably should. And then he had a late breakout age, 17th percentile. So definitely no way not good. any good. I'll take him more for me. I want him, I want that guy on all of my teams if I can get him. All right, that was enough time. Let's move on to the next player. All right, so the next two guys are going to be some running backs. We just we talked about one running back, then we talked about a couple of receivers. Now we're getting a little later down the process. Uh, we're going to start off with Eno Benjamin here, who's 37 at DLF ADP. And sometimes, like I said, sometimes you see him in the middle of the third. Sometimes you don't see him until the fourth or, or fifth. You know, it just it all depends on who's in that room and what they're looking at and who they like and who they listen to, who they read, what they see, all those kind of things. Um, I'm, uh, I don't dislike, Eno Benjamin, I don't think he's the best pure running back, but I do think he's a problem in the open field. Um, and he went into a place where, you know, the running back situation is a veteran on a one year deal and chase Edmonds. And I, I wouldn't say that if all those guys left that they would just hand it to, Eno Benjamin, they would probably bring in another veteran or draft somebody else the following year, but he is an interesting case. Not my favorite running back, but I could see some some good potential in this wide open offense here. Yeah, when you're talking about being in the fourth round of a of a rookie draft, like you're just taking stabs, you're throwing darts, and I I think this is a good dart throw as any. Like this dude is just just one of the most elusive guys that I've seen this year. He's, he was credited with 62 forced missed tackles, which is a ton. Uh, he's right. a playmaker. <laughs> like he can make something out of nothing. Uh, he didn't have the fastest 40, but but I think his play speed is really fast, and he had a 10-yard split in the 93rd percentile, so he's he's getting up I think speed that's pretty good. quick. Yeah, 93%'s got to be good, right? Uh, and I, I think his good is good. You know, you, you talk about how good is someone's good. When he's on, he, he's untackleable. I think he's got good burst, and he can string moves together. His vision gets called into question, sure, uh, but I like the fact that he, he doesn't dance. I think he does try to get north-south, and I, and I definitely saw an improvement in, in the games that he played from 18 to 19. He seemed to dance a little bit more in 18. He seemed like he improved as a player overall going into 19. I thought that the pass pro was decent, but, I mean, the thing is that it, he's a really smooth catcher. Uh, he mm -hmm. had 77 catches over the last two years. That ball just kind of sticks in there, and so I, I'm – I'm liking what I see from him, and he definitely fell in the draft. You know, I think he went in the sixth round, and seventh, so that's why he's uh, sixth or seventh. I thought it was Somewhere sixth, but there. I could be wrong. Um, but it's a good spot. You know, there's like you said, he's good in space, and they can get they can get space out there. So, so I, I like taking a stab on Eno Benjamin when I'm when I'm on the clock and I'm I'm looking at, at who to take. These, Eno and the next guy we're going to talk about are always staring me in the face. Like, I just can't stop looking at, at yeah. their names, and I, I want to take them, but I know I should take those other wide receivers first. But once we get past those guys, we're into the fourth round. If Eno's still sitting there, let me get him. Yeah, he was drafted seventh round, eighth pick. Um, and for a while there in the De Debbie Dynasty community, you know, was a pretty hot name coming into this year. Like he was up there with some of those top guys in some people's circles. And he, you know, he faded away a good bit. Uh, he's, but he's only 207 pounds. So that's another knock. People don't think he right. can handle the workload, which I'm not saying he's going to come in here and be a, a workhorse back. Right. But I mean, the man can catch the ball and he can break tackles. So it's a good a running back stab as any in an offense that's wide open. And he could he could have a decent role in there if, if things broke down and, and went the right way for him. So I can feel you on that one. Absolutely. <laughs> Even the, Absolutely. The, the, the the office is so wide open, some of his limited vision potential is not even going to be, maybe not even a problem. He's the, just going to have wide open spaces. The, the volume at which they run plays in that offense, even with a good run, even if Jake Drake doesn't get hurt, if the, between him and Chase Edmonds, if he were to go 
find a, find a, a get his make his way over Edmonds or B Edmonds gets hurt. Just being the second running back can be, could potentially be this is this last year was the first year of that system. They started off slow, picked it up towards the end. Kyler Murray's going to be a you know year two quarterback in a year two system, and he's absolutely physically gifted. And, and yeah, Nuke. If something and you had nuke, and if something were to happen, I, you know, you it would run it back. You always have to talk about if something happens to the starter, if Drake mm-hmm. were to go down. But I mean, it's just it's a the like the volume of the offense, the fact that he can catch, and he's a, they did draft him in the seventh round, which meant they didn't want to take a chance on him being a free agent, not being able to sign him after the draft, and yeah. in the fourth round, in the fourth round of your rookie draft, just to get a player. Right now, without them bringing in another veteran, that's in the top three of the depth chart on the team. It's going to make maybe have the most snaps in the in the in the NFL on yeah. offense. I want that guy. For that's sure. who I want in the fourth round. I want him on my team because by week eight, he might be a contributor. Could be in line for some work. All right, the next guy on the list is thirty nine on DLF ADP. You might seem like you've heard this before from us, but it's another P Ryan. It's Lamichael. He's out there. Um, he got drafted in the fourth round and the 14th pick by the New York Jets. Um, he's obviously behind Le'Veon Bell, but this is a guy who came in last year and de- cut some weight. You could see from 18 to 19, he cut some weight and he got quicker and got faster, even though maybe the combine long speed didn't rep- necessarily represent. Um, but I think this guy is is – can do a little bit of everything. He caught 40 balls last year. This is a really good player uh, just all around, just just checks a lot of boxes. You know, I don't think he would come in and if, if Le'Veon did get hurt or he spelled Le'Veon, like I don't think he's going to be like lighting the world on fire and be like, oh, you got to have Pirine on your team from now on out and he's just going to hold down the jet. But I think he would be a very good replacement level talent and a nice spell for somebody else. So I love the fact of, of LeMichael. And he's a good pass catcher or so. Give me the Michael. Yeah, real quick, I got to pour one out from my boy uh, Samaj here. Got to got to drip it out a little bit. R.I.P. Baby, we love some P. Ryan, so don't don't uh, don't 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 discount him just on name cash alone. <laughs> right, uh, Samaj is on the Bengals. Samaj is on the back. He's still in the league. We got a chance. There's you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. <laughs> we saw that one in a million talk. <laughs> That's great. No, I, th- I think there's a lot to like about P. Ryan, man. You read some of the reviews and they just they just dog the shit out of him. But it's like, come on, man. This dude is a tough runner. It, he averaged 5.1 yards per carry. 3.7 of those came after contact. So they don't credit him with like a ton of broken tackles. But my man's dragging dudes. Uh, and then the O-line didn't do him any favors. They ranked 93rd in the right. nation in run that blocking. O-line. So, so give him some credit there. I think I think the vision is is pretty pretty good. I I like the way he's seeing the field out there. And like you said, forty catches. Uh, the ball just sticks in there. He's got hands like glue. He had one drop last year and two over the course of his whole career. No, he didn't run the fastest forty, but I think it should be noted that his ten yard split was in the ninety fifth percentile. So he's pretty sure that's good too. Got to be good, right? Uh, yeah. So high and, score and, uh, is that is that good? Did that did that yeah. mean? <laughs> And 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 he he wasn't credited with breaking the most tackles, but I mean, there's I could point out times on tape when this dude was putting people on skates and like right. making them look silly. So I just and then and then another thing, man, is the pass protection. This dude is kicking ass, Rock like fucking solid. He's yeah. diagnosing blitzes, and then there's a play versus Virginia where he gets the handoff and it's a flea flicker. So he pitches it back to the quarterback and all in the same motion, delivers a good pitch and spins around and picks up the blitz that's coming right in his face and, like, gives the quarterback enough time to get the playoff. It was just – it was a thing of beauty. And so all around, I really like this guy. And, and if he's hanging around here in the fourth round, again, just like Eno, like he's staring at me in the face and I just – I want to take B. Ryan and I don't think it's just because how much I love Samaje. Right. <laughs> Well, that's fair. Big Co, any thoughts? Nope. Computer's on 2%. All right. <laughs> About uh, to explode over let's, here. Let's move on to the next player. All right. At number 40 coming in. Now, these are all guys, after we got to the running backs, we, you know, we said we got we had kind of one group of guys at the target, and then these are the next kind of group of guys. This guy also floats, fluctuates. Sometimes he's up in the third, sometimes he's in the fourth. It's Quintez Cephas. 
Could you imagine if you had a speech impediment trying to say this dude's name? <laughs> like, like the guy from Seafish. Seafish. Like the 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 kid from Family Guy that, that Mort's son just <laughs> anyway, just right, want to throw so it he, in there. He got drafted by the Lions, fifth round, twenty first pick overall. Um I don't have a ton to say about Cephas besides the physicality on this guy is great. Um, he's got some, he's got some built up speed and he's got some quickness that I think is underrated. And I know there's a story that's been going around and it's made its rounds. And when we talked to Angelo FF on a podcast a long time ago, uh, at the beginning of all these processes, I told the story about how, you know, every year at the combine they get, they ask all these DBs who was, you know, the hardest guy to cover. And a lot of the guys in the big 10 said it was Cephas, not, and the guy who he just got drafted with, uh, Akuda said he was the toughest guy to cover, uh, bar none in his college career. Uh, and that's coming from the guy who was the first rated, uh, D back in, in college football. And, uh, I think that that speaks volumes about the guy. Again, we're taking shots here. There's not a line on contract. I don't think after 2021 doesn't mean they won't sign Kenny Galladay. Doesn't mean they won't bring in other guys. But this is a rock solid player right here, and this is a guy that I'm always always targeting um, in later in drafts because I just I just think it's just phenomenal value. 96 percentile in the in the uh, uh, weight bench. Strong. Mm-hmm. incredibly strong. strong guy like and you see that you see slow that 40 tape. and 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 some injuries which you know automatically disqualifies him from some people's shit so if you have a slow 40 then there's no chance you can be good but i mean this dude plays just so physical like you said he, he he works through all sorts of contact there's so many catches where he's getting pass interference on and he still makes the catch and and like you said 23 bench reps which i think he plays bigger than his size he's only he's only 600 or uh, he's only 62 i think 202 pounds maybe but it's straight muscle and he can definitely add to that frame to keep continue to bully cornerbacks at the next level he's I mean, a bully he's, that's perfect he's just a hot he's a high pointer drink <laughs> i'm out of beer i'm out of beer i would he, that was that's one more bench press rep than the michael p ryan the running back there yeah you and go. josh Kel- that's how many josh kelly did there you go. Uh, and this dude plays, he plays like a running back over the middle. He has no fear. He'll extend outside of his frame to make a difficult catch behind him or out in front of him and, and, and put his body at risk when he knows he's about to get drilled over the middle. It's just a thing of beauty. He does have some burst. I mean, he had a good vert and a good broad that, that, that mm-hmm. you can see that burst up field. And like you said, some build up speed and, and he can make a highlight catch. There's just there's nothing dynamic about him, you know. There's nothing right. super no exciting. Sexy. No, no, se- he's not bringing sexy back. He's just, he's just chilling with a hard hat, a lunch pail, yeah. and he wants to go to work. He wants to put on his, his. He's probably got a closet full of the same fucking shirts, and just. <laughs> that's what the Lions need, baby. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So yep. I mean, nothing sexy there, but a guy that I'm always, always targeting. The later I get in drafts, he's the guy that I'm always looking for. Quint- Quintez Cephas. Um, Co, you got anything good? No, I hope we throw in the ball 100%. early and often. Oh yeah, hanging on by a thread. All right, let's let's move on to uh, the next guy, who's the only tight end we're going to talk about, and then we got two more just dart throws, and we'll get out of your hair. All right, so the next guy is forty six on DLF ADP. It's Dalton Keene out of Virginia Tech, who got drafted by the Patriots in the third round, the thirty seventh pick. Um, this guy is basically just tailor made for the Patriots mustache and all six dash. It's fantastic. <laughs> if you haven't seen that thing, check it out. Um, he's just a Swiss army knife. That's it. That's the way to put this thing. He can split out wide. He can line up in line as a regular tight end. He can give you snaps at H back. You could put him in there as a, as a running back for a second. He's a phenomenal. He's already tuned in in the, in the blocking aspect of things, which all of those things is what makes him a great Patriot already. And then on top of that, you put a good athletic profile on there. He didn't have a ton of college production, but he's compared to Kahale Waring, um, according to player profiler, which he's got a, a really good um, athletic profile on there. And, and by, just on another note, that's one of my number one veteran off season targets for your tight end position for, for cheap money, dirt cheap guy. Kahale Waring is somebody you should pick up um, over there for the Texans, but I digress. Um, 
Keen ran a 4740. He was 71st percentile or higher in all the workout metrics and 85th percentile in burst score. So to add to all that versatility, there's a bunch of athleticism built in with this guy. Um, so all those things should get him on the field early and often for the Patriots. That's Taylor, Taylor made for the Pats. And then you want to get into what the Pats got going on. They got an old Edelman with a new quarterback. They got a young receiver in Harry who the jury's still out on. And again, a new quarterback. Uh, quarterback out there and then there's no tight ends to speak of and on here and they did draft another tight end 10 spots ahead of him um in Devin Asai 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 um who is definitely a little bit more of the pass pure pass catching kind of guy but seems to be a little bit more of a project whereas Keen I think will come right in and be able to from all the things that he can do uh, Asai Asai is not a he's not gonna block anybody which could, you know, could be a project and keep him off the field for a little while with the Patriots, whereas King could come in right away. Again, he's getting drafted super late, and in, he's, you know, in regular drafts with no tight end premium, probably not even being drafted, but a nice stab in your tight end premium leagues. Um, and just a good over – you could bet on the other guy who got drafted 10 spots higher, but if I'm betting, I'm, I'm a betting man, and if I'm betting, I'm betting on Keen. Thoughts in uh, – yeah, you like you said, he's rarely getting drafted. We've done a bunch of mocks, and we're calling him tight end premium, although you can't set up that actual feature on, on the app. But we're, 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 everybody's leaning towards that tight end premium, and I don't even see him getting drafted sometimes in those, in those mocks. So if you're telling me there's a guy that I can take with close to the last pick of my draft who's an athletic tight end for the Patriots who need something like that right now, then I'm, I'm down to do it. Big Co. Who's chased yeah, the Patriots I mean, tight ends for 15 years? For sure. That's a little, uh, <laughs> this year is, uh, I would, if, if this would have happened with Brady still in tow, sure. I, I probably wouldn't even be, I'd probably be less excited than I am now. You couldn't keep your pants on. <laughs> uh, He's saying the opposite. Not, I'm Who saying has the opposite pants on? Right We're all in quarantine. I haven't worn yeah. pants in like seven weeks. I think I I think I played myself out of chasing the tight end with the Patriots, but Fair. now with this this new regime, Fool, we can't get fooled at quarterback. Um, I'm open to it. I think they uh, I think they play football a little differently for the next year or so. If Stidham mm -hmm. if Stidham's really the starter, and they don't bring in somebody, you know, obviously Dalton's gone to the Cowboys, and I just at this point I just don't see. Everything they do, everything they have on offense currently is for a highly accurate passer. So I don't think I don't think Cam even plays there for the Cam's not going to the Patriots in my eyes because they don't have not that they can't change up, but their entire personnel is based around what mm -hmm. they, how right. the how the quarterback position is being played currently in their franchise. And obviously Stidham's no Brady, but he's going to step in there and try to be that pocket passer. Right. And so I don't, I just don't see them changing gears with Cam, even though it would make a ton of sense from just trying to win a football game and being fun. So I, I, I can get down with some Dalton Keene very late in my drafts for just based on where this thing's headed in new England. Yeah. All right. Well, I got Total two reboot. more. Yeah. I got two more guys on here. Um, and one of them is just a running back dart throw. Um, Jamichael Hasty, um, out of Baylor, a undrafted free agent. He went to the Niners. If you're, and also the, the guy out of, um, Washington Ahmed also went to the Niners. So two just super late dart throw guys in deeper bench leagues and deeper draft leagues and all those kind of things. Uh, Hasty's a guy that I discovered when I was watching, uh, Mims tape. He ends up, he pops off the screen a couple of times. He's a playmaker. Um, fun to watch. Went back and watched some highlights and some other things. I'm not going to say that I dove super deep into Hasty, but just on those deep stabs. And then if you're going to tell me I can get a, I'm going to, I can stab on a Niners running back. Uh, I'll take a guy that I saw some, some pretty electric plays coming out of. You guys have any thoughts on him? I'll take a cheap Niners running back. I mean, um, I, you digressed on Cahill wearing, I'll digress on, uh, uh, Tevin Coleman just being ridiculously cheap in the startup draft right now. I'll take yeah. him like 10th right. round or something like that. So maybe 10th or 12th round, Tevin Coleman, give me him. All right. So Hasty and Ahmed were just kind of shots for some, some super deep stuff and maybe just scoop him up after the draft's over if he doesn't get picked. And then one of my favorite picks for super flex leagues all around at the end of drafts, maybe the last pick of the draft or when it's over is go pick yourself up PJ Walker. 
Um, he's on the Carolina Panthers. Um, this quick backstory behind him is he played with Andrew Luck in, in Indianapolis. He didn't make the team. He didn't end up sticking around. And when Oliver Luck, who was the commissioner or president or something in the XFL, Andrew called him up and said, hey, you got to go get this guy, P.J. Walker. He's there. There's a lot of talent there. He just was, wasn't quite all together. And he went into the XFL, and he absolutely lit it up. If they would have finished the season, like he, they were probably winning the Super, the Super Bowl or whatever the hell they were going to call it, the XFL Bowl on the the Vince McMahon Bowl, whatever, the WWE Bowl, it's WrestleMania, McMahon whatever Bowl. the hell they were going to call it. Um, they were probably going to win, and they were calling this guy the Patrick Mahomes of the XFL. You know, take that for what it is, but he was he he can scramble around. He was making all sorts of off platform sidearm throws on the move, uh, very accurate, could throw it deep. And then on top of that, he went to the Carolina Panthers, who he went to Temple. He's been with Matt Rule before. They're familiar with each other. I know they have Teddy Bridgewater signed up, but this is a super cheap guy who is familiar with Rule, and he's more. Teddy's more for the system that was being ran in New Orleans last year where it's hyper-efficient, old breeze, check it down, uh, and, and keep the ball kind of coming out. And P.J. Walker is probably a little bit more built for the future of what Joe Brady was just running down at LSU, which used to be the form of a little bit more of the Saints open, wide open concepts. Uh, but now Drew Brees is a little old, so they, you know, Teddy came in and spot duty for him. Um, so I, I like P.J. Walker as just the, the, the best flyer and super flex that you could have right now. Yeah, let me get that Mahomes of the XFL, baby. That's a that's an exciting stab, and, and uh, he's a guy that's pretty much hanging around in all your drafts. If you can get veterans on on in the rookie draft, that's a great, great deep super flex tight end or, uh, uh, quarterback stab. One more guy I want to bring up real quick that we didn't really mention, and I'm not sure exactly where he fits in here because I've seen him all over the place, but he could end up potentially being a value. If you're looking for an absolute home run cut, Fun kind of swing. We didn't bring up Anthony Lynn uh, Bowden Jr. Uh, or Lynn, not Anthony, Lynn Bowden Jr. Uh, he's he's the guy right. from from uh, Memphis, and he does it all, man. Right. He returns punts, kicks, he can throw it, he can catch it, and he's labeled as a as a running back, which is pretty awesome. So it's right. be interesting to see how the Raiders end up using him. But if if you're looking for those absolute home run cuts, he's another guy you can kind of throw in. Just keep your eye on in these drafts. And and I agree, Lynn Bowden from Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah. right, not Memphis. My bad. We could have easily, you know, we could have went through and, and added three more guys on here, but it was just, we, didn't, we didn't want to. So I like throwing him in, in here at the end, and he's definitely kind of in the home run cut area of, you know, just being a playmaker. So could be right, Taysom Hill slash running back slash all sorts of shit. He put the team on his back at Kentucky. So be interesting to see what they do with, with Bowden Jr. He's but, a baller. All right, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully that helps some people out there for guys to target kind of, you know, end of the second through the third and then some guys for the fourth and later later on uh, to help. Yeah, those are just the guys that we're, we're looking at when we're in these mocks, and that's kind of kind of what we're thinking, and hopefully that can help you out. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe out there. Stay at home. Watch us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're going to have some mocks coming up here. I guess we just lost Big Co., um, but be on the lookout for these mocks that we're going to put out. Uh, do us a favor. Give us a comment down in that section below. Tell us who your sleeper is or who you're looking out for. Or just give us some love or shade if that's what you're feeling. Yeah. Um, but uh, And if you're feeling the show, if you like it at all, hit us with that like button. That'd be also oh kind of you. And if you're looking for more, uh, if you're looking for more content, if you're looking for trade advice, if you're just looking for a community of like-minded dynasty guys, uh, hit us up on Patreon over uh, patreon.com slash FF Dynasty. It's a $5 holler. After you get this cool T-shirt after six months and just a lot of cool things going on over there and, and just way way more access to us. And, uh, you know, you got a question, we'll answer it. Might bring it up on the Patreon show. Uh, there's a really cool uh, trade advice uh, show that's sitting over there we just did where we did a bunch of FFPC trades and, and how we move in and out of a, of a rookie mock when you're on the clock. And uh, so anyways, like we said, thanks for joining us. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Peace.